This is Music 103, KMOX FM, St. Louis. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight is a program of adventure with Howard Duff as your host. Here's a preview. I'll build you a fireplace in our house on the island. Can you do that? I can try. I'm glad we're doing this. I really am, John. It's just that, you know, this is something most people only dream or talk about. But we're actually doing it. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Howard Duff. It's a warm, suburban Saturday morning. This neighborhood is a comfortably affluent one with carefully clipped hedges and tidy lawns, the houses sprawling in varying architectural styles. In front of the Robinson family's large white colonial, there is a great deal of activity this morning. Two signs stand before the house. One with the word sold in red letters flashed prominently across it. Beside it, printed in a childish and uneven hand on flimsy poster board, is the sign that's brought the people flocking. It says... Moving sale. The Robinson twins, Sarah and Sean, with irrepressible 11 year old enthusiasm, are the prime movers in this enterprise. They stand together proudly and eagerly survey their potential customers. The lawn is littered with an odd collection of family possessions. There are garish pots and overstuffed chair, magazines, ancient record albums, and white elephant vases. Off to the side, 17-year-old Rosemary's long-forgotten and bedraggled doll buggy stands unsteadily on three wheels. Joanna Robinson stands at the window of the breakfast room looking out, remembering her oldest daughter's third birthday party where the buggy had been the crowning glory with a giant pink bow tied around it. The twins have tagged it with a price of 50 cents. Joanna turns away from the window, slowly sips her coffee, and looks at her son Brad, who has slunk at the table with a plate of scrambled eggs cooling and untouched in front of him. Brad, did you put anything out for the sale? No. Why not? You must have lots of things you won't be needing. No, I don't. What about your skis? My skis? I'm not selling my skis. But you won't need them on the island. I'm not going, Mom. It's the dumbest idea I ever heard, going out to live on an island. Brad, the house is sold. We're leaving in a few days. I'm not. I'll find my own place. You're not old enough. What's old got to do with anything? Brad, we had a vote. You were the only one against going. What am I supposed to do on an island with no friends, nothing to do, no place to go? You know, you always say you want me to treat you like an adult. All right, I'm going to talk to you like one. Life has gone pretty sour around here. Have you noticed that? This is our chance to make a fresh start, maybe our last chance. We've been chased from the city to the suburbs. Now the crime, pollution, all the old city problems are here. I know it seems drastic to run off to an island, but in all this craziness, it seemed to us the sanest solution. Can you understand that? I'll never understand. (laughs) The American family Robinson, survivors of the shipwreck of modern living, are looking for peace, and refuge on a remote and isolated island in the Caribbean. Will they find what they seek? That's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, American Family Robinson by Pamela Russell. Our stars, Keith Andes and Mary Jane Croft. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. departure is very near. Joanna Robinson sits before the fire in the empty den. It's late, and everyone else is asleep. She stares into the flames and considers the giant move her family's making and the enormous changes it will bring to all of their lives. Can't sleep? No. Looks like you need another log. Oh, 
I was thinking about Brad. I don't know what else to try. I don't know what to say to him. I'm at my wit's end with him. Well, I guess we were lucky to have had only one problem child out of four. Oh, John. Brad's not a problem child. He's at a difficult age, that's all. He's right in the middle. He's not a boy. He's not a man. And he's right in the middle of this family, too. He's not the baby. He's not the oldest. He's just in the middle. And that's not a very fun place to be. I don't care how you're defending Brad. Brad's been at a difficult age all of his life, Joanna. We both know it. He was a troubled baby and little boy. He's an impossible adolescent. God knows what kind of an adult he'll be. Brad's one of the main reasons they want us out of here. I don't like the way he's hit it, almost getting thrown out of school for smoking pot in the bathroom. And, and how many other stunts? The island will be the best thing that could happen to him. I know that, and you do. The trick is to convince Brad. You know, there's so much inside of him. I, I think he has so much trouble because he's more sensitive than the others. Maybe you're right. But I can't stand to see him go slouching around so sullen and negative. Well, most kids would jump at the chance to go live on an island. Look at Sarah and Sean. Rosemary, too. They can't wait to go. Rosemary will be going to college next year. This is just a lark to her. And the twins. They're 11 years old, John. They're not seeing past the going. It's like something out of a movie or television to them. Brad's thinking about after we've gone. After we've gotten there. Being there. Living there. And you're thinking about it, too, aren't you? No. Yes, aren't you? Mm, yes and no. <laughs> For the moment, I just want to be 11 years old and think only about the going, that's all. <laughs> I wish I could do that. Are you having second thoughts, Joanna? Doubts? Are you sorry we're going? No, I'm not sorry. I'm a little scared. And when I look around this room, there's a twinge of regret. I always loved this room the best. I'll build you a fireplace in our house on the island. Can you do that? I can try. I'm glad we're doing this. I really am, John. It's just that, you know, this is something most people only dream or talk about. But we're actually doing it. Yes. Who would have thought six months ago when we took that cruise in the Caribbean that we'd come back with an island all our own? You know I was ready to consider it an investment if you and the kids hadn't wanted to live there. No. I'm not so sure of that, John. I think you might have gone away and lived there alone. <laughs> Why do you say that? I believe it. I know that things haven't been the same the way they used to be between us in a long time. We've been married nearly 20 years. It can't be moonlight and roses forever. Well, not moonlight and roses, but some sharing and talking together. I thought intimacy grew with time. I didn't think it died. Do you know that since the island came into our lives, we've had something to talk about? I mean, really, talk about for the first time in years. Did you know how silent our marriage had become, John? Yeah, I knew. The business was so consuming. It it got so I, I didn't know who I was anymore. Not me alone or me in relation to you or the kids. There was just someone who took care of business all day and thought about it all night. A machine. I can't explain what a relief it was when I knew that deal had gone through. That I'd sold it and the business was no longer mine. <laughs> how could that be? How, how could I be so happy to be rid of the thing that I'd worked for and thought I wanted for all of my life? How could I have gotten so far away from myself? Oh, it happens. It happens all the time. <laughs> I really will build that fireplace for you. And we'll sit in front of it nights and talk. There'll be lots of moonlight on that island. I, I'm not sure I can promise you roses. Yes, but let's... Don't attach too many promises to the island. Uh, I'm afraid of weighing it down. Let's just let it happen. Just let it happen as it will, okay? All right. Joanna, there was something I wanted to tell you. I... I'd given up on it tonight. I was going to try in the morning, but maybe now is the time. Oh, what is it? I went to see Dad today. You did? Yeah. Joanna, he wants to come with us. To the island? Yes. But, 
John, your father's not a well man, and he's not young. I don't think he could survive it. I don't think he can survive here much longer. The reason he's old and sick is because that's all anybody will let him be anymore. I told him he could come with us. Without even discussing it with me? We're discussing it now. After it's decided. Should I have told him no? No, of course not. Your father has a right to the island, too. He has a right to live. Yeah. To live with some pride and dignity. Every time I've gone to that retirement home, I've wanted to take him with me when I left. And now you're going to. Mm. Dad's going to come with us. After all, it seems only right that there should be three generations on our island, doesn't it? Yes. The Robinson family is flying to Miami, where they will take a boat out to their island. Brad sits by the window, regretfully watching his home recede below him. The twins munch peanuts and keep up a steady stream of questions. Rosemary is seated beside her father... And Gordon Robinson has taken the seat next to his daughter-in-law, Joanna. Joanna, can I have the stewardess bring you a magazine or something? Oh, no, thanks, Dad. I don't think I could concentrate enough to read right now. Excited? Yeah, and nervous. I'm afraid I'm not much of a traveler. I get a little apprehensive on planes. I can't quite convince myself that this is a natural state for humans. Birds, yes. People, no. <laughs> I think I understand. Joanna, I know you're worried about my coming to the island. No, Dad. I just... Yes, 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 I, I know. An old codger like me dragging along with you. So much excess baggage, I know. Now, that's not true. I'll admit I'm worried about your health. We'll be a long way from a doctor. But, Dad, I have never thought of you as excess baggage. I've been too close to too many doctors for too long. And I'll tell you, Joanna... I may be more help out there than anybody would ever get. I'm sure you will. I'm the son of a farmer, you know. I know more than a little bit about the land, and before everybody started telling me I was too old to function, I was a pretty damn good architect. Well, believe me, we're all happy to have you with us. Just need me. Make use of me out there, and I'll be happy to. If we're going to make it work, we all have to pull together. Mom! Mom, how much longer? Till what, Sean? Till we get there to the island. How much longer? Oh, quite a while yet. Sean, will you quit bouncing a seat? What a grouch. Just quit it, will you? Sean, you'd better sit down. They're going to be serving dinner soon. Yeah, Daddy. Sean, take lasagna. Yuck. I bet it'll be better than your old chicken you picked. It will not. Well, too. It will not. Well, too. Shut up. You two are driving me nuts. Brad, I don't want to hear you talk that way to your brother and sister. Now, there are plenty of empty seats on this plane. If you dislike being a member of this family so much, why don't you take one of them? It's the best idea you've had in a long time, Dad. Brad, please. Wait, Brad. Let him go, Joanna. But, John... He can't go far. Joanna, I think the boy needs some time alone. I know what he needs, but Joanna won't let me give it to him. Oh, Daddy, you know you wouldn't hit Brad. <laughs> I'm just a big softy, huh? Yes, exactly. Well, I guess I've been found out. What's what's that you're reading, Rosie? It's a book about the islands near ours. Maybe even ours is mentioned in here. I haven't gotten that far yet. What's the island's name anyway? You know. Oh, I forgot. Santa Bonita. Isn't it, Daddy? Santa Bonita. Yep, that's it. I don't like that name. Couldn't we call it something else, Dad? Well, I guess we could if we wanted to. What would you call it, son? Oh, this ought to be good. <laughs> Don't you think I'll make a good name for a Oh, I'm just remembering the time you wanted to name my white Angora kitten, Harold. Harold was better than what you called it. Peaches. Boy, what a name. Well, anyway, what do you want to name the island, son? Fred? Or Clyde, maybe. An island named Clyde. Oh, that would be perfect. I don't think I want to call it anything till I see it. And when I see it, I'll know just what to call it. Oh, I can't wait to see it. How much longer now? Still a ways to go yet. Here's dinner. Yeah, here comes your lasagna, Sean. Yuck. Better than your old chicken. I'm not very hungry. I think I'll go find bread. The island, as the 
Robinson family approached from the sea looked like a collection of low, mossy slopes. As the skiff came slowly into the cove, a bed of kelp wavered golden and tangled in the clear water near them. High in the sky above them, two cormorants wheeled in a kind of welcoming aerial dance. It was a beautiful, bright blue day for their landing. Brad, will you help me here? It needs to be pulled up a little further on the sand. Here, here let, let me help you. Thanks, out. Dad. Let's take it easy. Uh, Brad and I've got it now. We're here. We're really here. Sean, don't wander off low. Sean, come back here. Oh, Mom, I just want to see our island. Yeah, I know you do. We all do. But first things first. Right now we're going to see where we'll be living. Is it a real house, Mommy? Like our other house? No, this is just a temporary house, Sarah. It was here when we bought the island. It's a place to stay until we build our real house. Are we going to build it ourselves? Yes. All of us? Yep, all of us. Now let's move out. It's this way. We'll be at the clearing soon. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's just the way I pictured it. Yeah, we'll we'll cross the stream here. It looks shallow enough. Sarah, take my hand. John? I'm okay, Mom. I can swim, you know. Dad, are you all right? Fine. Yeah, just fine. You know, I was thinking we could build a little bridge across the stream. It's going to be an awful nuisance wading across all the time. A bridge would be just the thing. Now, we're very lucky to have this stream. It's our fresh water supply. Some islands have none. It's hardly a nuisance. But a, a bridge would be nice, Dad. Don't get excited. Everybody calm down. It was just a wild goat. Oh, great. Wild goats. Can we ride them? No, I don't think I'd try that, Sean. Are they dangerous, Dad? Well, I'd uh, I'd avoid confrontation. But if, if you leave them alone, I'm sure they'll leave you alone. Well, how did they get here? There, there's a legend that pirates brought them here. Why? Well, they hoped the goats would live and multiply. Then, if the pirates ever sailed back again, there would be a, a food supply. Oh, Daddy, the pirates ate goats? <laughs> I guess they did. Pirates? Were there really pirates here, Dad? Yeah, so the story goes. You think they left any treasure here? Buried treasure? It's possible. Well, here we are. This is it? The shack? We're supposed to live in this shack? L- like all of us? It's bigger inside than it looks. There's one large room with four smaller ones off to each side. What about the bathroom? Yeah, well, there isn't one. Great. Brad, I'm warning you. I've had just about John, enough of... John, let's go inside. What's that big, ugly thing over there? Well, my guess would be, Sarah, that that is our generator. Am I right, John? Yes, Dad. What's the generator? Well, that's what gives us our electricity, honey. Oh, you mean for the hair dryer and toaster. Stuff like that. Yeah, but... Uh, you're not going to find those things inside. Why not? Well, because we don't really need them. We don't? How am I going to dry my hair? How about out in the sun, Sarah? The sun will dry your hair. Yeah. And then you can take a piece of bread out in the sun and try to toast it, see how far you get. Come on, let's go inside and take a look around, see if they brought our boxes. How long ago did they say this place was built, John? Oh, about 40 years. A man named Schmidt built it. He tried to farm this island, but he died after only a short time here. Did he die right here, Daddy? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Oh, I don't think I like it here very much. Well, we're not going to be here very long. We're going to have our own beautiful house built before you know it, Sarah. What did that man Schmidt die of, anyway? Boredom. This place is really creepy. Maybe if we opened a window, it would help. Oh! Rosemary, what is it? Oh, seen such a big spider in my life. Oh, I'll kill it. No, no, don't, Brad. What, are you crazy? Just take it outside, okay? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry if I scared everybody. I looked up and there it was, right in my face. It was so big. Where's Sean? I, I don't think he came in with us. No, he didn't. Where is he, Sarah? Well, he told me he was going to go look for the treasure. What treasure? The pirate treasure Daddy was talking about. Oh, Sean. 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 Sean! What's wrong now? Oh, Sean went off alone to look for buried treasure. Some little kid. Brad, that's not what I need to hear right now. Go 
Don't panic, Joanna. I'll find him. Uh, well, maybe we don't to divide up and cover the whole island. Dad, I'm the only one who really knows the island. If, if you all go out looking, there's a good chance everyone will wind up lost. John's right. He can't have gone very far. Man, yeah, sit tight. I'll be back with Sean in no time. Rosemary, what are you doing up there? You won't laugh. Of course not. I was trying to measure for curtains. Curtains would really cheer this place up. You're right. does need some cheering. Well, it's hard to imagine giant spiders crawling on pretty yellow gingham curtains. <laughs> I think the curtains will drive them off. <laughs> Leave it to you to use curtains as a weapon. <laughs> You're laughing at me, Mother. <laughs> well, I'm not. It's just that you make me so happy. I'm very proud of you, Rosemary. Thank you. Mother? Yes? I... I don't know how to say this to you. What is it? What's wrong? Are you starting to wish we hadn't come here? Oh, no, it's not that. It's just the opposite, really. I love it here. I'm afraid I'll never want to leave. But, darling, you'll be leaving for college just a few months. Will I? I'm not so sure. What do you mean? I don't know if I want to go to college. I feel happy here, content. I don't feel pressure to perform. You feel that Daddy and I pressured you, Rosemary? No. I did it to myself. Since I was nine, I've been working for grades. I wanted to excel to be the best. I wanted all the awards, all the commendations. I wasn't interested in learning. What I really cared about was being rewarded for learning. And now I feel differently. I don't want to go back there, Mother. I don't want to begin running the race again. Are you afraid? Yes. I'm afraid of letting winning become the most important thing to me. Here, I think I can love learning for its own sake. In college, it will be who can learn the most the fastest for a certain test, and when the test is over, who can forget the quickest. I'm tired of competing, Mother. But that's life, my dear. I guess it is, but not here. Isn't that what coming to this island was all about? Didn't we come to escape all of that? Well, yes, but... But what, Mother? But you're young, Rosemary. Daddy and I tried to change the world. We failed. But maybe you won't. You have to go out there and try to make your mark, make some difference in the world. We never intended that you or Brad or the twins should stay here forever, isolate yourselves for your whole life. Please, darling, try college. Don't choose escape too soon in your life. We'll be here. If you want to come back, we'll be here for you. Maybe knowing that will make it easier for you out there. Please, you must try, darling. All right, Mother. I'll try. No, no, I, I came looking for you. Your mother's worried sick. How come? Because you, you just wandered off and didn't tell anybody where you were going. I told Sarah. I told her that I was going to look for the treasure, but I haven't found any yet. Sean, sit down here for a minute. I, I want to explain something to you. What? It, it's going to be different living here on the island, not like back home. Yeah, I know. It's really neat here. I saw some of those wild goats, and I almost got one to come up to me, right up to my hand. Huh. Well, I'm, I'm glad you like it here, but, you know, I want you to love this place, but there are some things you have to know about living here. Like what? Like no going off exploring unless you tell somebody exactly where you're going to be. But if I'm exploring, I don't know where I'm going to be. I want you to know. Before you go off alone again, you're going to know this island. I'm taking everyone on a tour, and I'm taking a compass. I'm going to make sure that everyone knows how to read it. Sarah, too? Yes, yeah, Sarah, too. This is a lot bigger place than you think. It's easy to get lost. Yeah, I've been looking for you for hours, Sean. You have? Yes. I want to ask you something. Can you find your way back to the house from here? Sure. All right, which way? That way. You positive? Sure. All right. Let's find out if you're right. Okay.
Dad, uh, this doesn't look right. I don't think this is the right way. It's not, Sean, but I, I want you to see which way you were headed. Come on. Where are we, Dad? The other side of the island. Look down there. Wow. That's a 300-foot drop to the sea. It's getting dark, and I would have come this way. I might have fallen, Dad. Yes, you might have. Now, that's what happens. You get confused, turned around, and then you're lost. Now, I don't want to scare you, Sean, but there are things on this island that take great care and caution in handling. Now, soon you're going to know this place like the back of your hand. I don't want you to be afraid. I I only want you to have some respect. Do you understand what I mean? I think so. Good. Dad, do you think I'll ever find the treasure? Hey, anything could happen. I thought of a name. A name? Yeah, for the island. Kayog. Kayog? Sure. It's great spelled backwards. Mm. From now on, this is the <laughs> island of Kayog. <laughs> you like it? Is it okay? That's a fine name, Sean. It sounds like some kind of, uh, some kind of Jules Verne. The island of Kayog. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. you to see something. What is it, Rosemary? Look, Brad must have gone over to sit and wait with Sarah. She's fallen asleep in his lap. <sighs> this is a beautiful island, but that's the prettiest sight I've seen all day. Are you ready for another one? Look, just coming into the clearing, it's Dad and... And Sean, they've come back. They're home. <laughs> for over a month now. Next to the dilapidated old house, a structure is beginning to take shape. Their new home. John and Rosemary are perched, hammering nails into the wood frame. A little ways away, Gordon Robinson kneels beside a low fence and spades the earth of his garden. Joanna and the twins come walking into the clearing, carrying armloads of wild flowers they've been out gathering. All around the place, there's the feeling of peace and happiness. Only Brad stays apart from the others. Pale and idle, he sits under a tree watching them. Time for lunch, everyone. Whew, that wind is really picking up. Yes, I think we may be in for a storm. I've been keeping my eye on that bank of clouds to the east. Seems to be moving in. No, it doesn't look any closer to me. I don't think so, Dad. And maybe not. But there's been a strange feel to the air today. I, I don't know, kind of heavy. Well, whether there's a storm coming or not, it's lunchtime. Let's all go in and eat. Sounds good to me. I am famished. I've never in my life had such an appetite. This place must agree with me. Brad, lunch. I'll be in in a minute. Uh, just think of it. Soon we'll be eating salads from my garden. Daddy, next time you have to come with us to see the spot we found. They're the most beautiful flowers. It looks like you picked nearly all of them. Oh, we didn't even make a dent. That's how many there are. It's like a fairyland. Uh, just as soon as the house is finished, I'll go out with you. Oh, sit here, Brad. How much longer will it be, Daddy, until the house is finished? It seems to be taking so long. Well, it would go faster if we had more help. I'll help. I didn't mean you, Sean. No, Sean. She meant me. That's right, I did. Don't you ever get tired of just sitting under that tree, Brad? Sure I get tired of it. I get so tired of it sometimes I think I'll go nuts or maybe I'll just take the boat and try to get back home. This is your home, Brad. No, it isn't. What's happening? Well, look. Look at it out there. What is it? What? What? Why is the sky so dark? How come it's black all of a sudden? Is it a storm, Dad? No. No, it's not a storm. I think we'd all better go inside. And close that door. I'm scared. You're always scared. Okay, you two. Back to the table. Everybody, let's finish our lunch. Come on. John, what is it? I'm 
Not sure. But you think you know. You're afraid. I can tell, and it's making me afraid. Is it... Is it what I'm thinking? Is it a hurricane? No, no. What then? What are you two whispering about over there? You don't come to the table, I'm going to eat your lunch and mine. We're coming, Dad. We're coming. Dad, if it's not a storm, what's happening? Is that rain? No. I'm going to go see what it is. Brad, stay where you are. No one is to go outside. Dad, what's going on? What is it, John? It's not a storm. What's making the sky dark is sulfurous ash and smoke, not clouds. A volcano. A volcanic eruption. Here? No, 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 not here. It must be in an island nearby. How near? Well, there's no way of knowing. It could be as far as a hundred miles from us. It depends on the, well, the size of the eruption, the force of it, how much we feel it. That's a shower of rocks. That's why no one must go outside. You'd be hurt very badly. But what can we do, Dad? Just wait it out. That's all we can do. Mom? Mom? I- I'm sorry to wake you. No, I wasn't asleep. What is it, honey? It's Sarah. She had a nightmare. I can't calm her down. Oh, I'll be right there. Okay, Mom. What's wrong, Joanna? Sarah had a bad dream. I'm going over to the girls' room. Oh. It just doesn't let up. I think it's getting worse. It's been going on for hours. When does it stop? I don't know. A volcano can blow an entire island apart. If that should happen, we could have massive boulders hurled down on us and a huge disturbance in the ocean. A tidal wave? Maybe. I don't know. Anything could happen. I'm so sorry, Joanna. Why? I'm sorry for getting us into this. We all wanted to come. All of us but Brad. It's been a lovely idol up until now. A marvelous adventure. We've all been having a great time playing Swiss Family Robinson. Well, now we're up against it. The real thing. If we can't take it, then we shouldn't be here. This is part of the life we said we wanted. If we're not strong enough, we better find out now. We'll call this an interesting vacation and go back. You're remarkable, Joanna. No, we're not going back. We still have things to do here. I've got to build that fireplace. No more apologies for bringing us here? No. i got to go to Sarah. Oh, my garden. My garden. You can't go out there, Grandpa. I, I have to. My garden's on fire. Grandpa. Grandpa! Oh, look at it. You've got to come inside, Sarah. There's nothing we can do. Oh, my garden. It's all burned. It's burned. All burned. Yeah, Grandpa. It's lost. It's gone. Come on, Grandpa. We've got to get inside. Oh, no. I'm not going. I'll help you plant another garden. I promise I will. Come on, Grandpa. Right. Dad! Grandpa? Another garden, Brad? You promise? Yeah, yes. Let's go. Uh, what were you doing out there? You could have been killed. You were trying to save something, Dad. I don't care what you were trying to do. You shouldn't have been out there. You know, you're trouble to all of us, and you'll never be anything else. I'll be happy to ship you off this island just as soon as you can go. John, John, you're wrong about the boy. He doesn't want to hear it, Grandpa. He never has. to me. 
<laughs> Yesterday, I would have jumped at the chance to go. Maybe it's Grandpa in his garden. The old guy loved that patch of dirt. He worked so hard. And I promised him I'd help him with another one. I don't really know why I promised, but I feel I have to keep it. Look, Dad, I still think this is a pretty nutty idea, but maybe it's growing on me or something. This place is beautiful. It was last night, and even now, this morning, all torn up and covered in ash. It's beautiful. Hmm. Your grandfather was right last night. And your mother's been right all along. I've been wrong about you, Brad. I never thought you could say that. Even admit you were wrong, Dad. I guess I've been wrong about you, too. It looks like it took a volcano to blast us loose from what we thought about each other. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hey, come look what I found. What is it, huh? Mom? Is it treasure? I think maybe so. Look. Oh, it's pottery. Let me see. It, uh, it, it looks pre-Columbian. What's that mean? Pirates? Older than pirates. The people who made that bowl were here long before the pirates. You mean it's not treasure, it's just an old bowl? Oh, uh, this is something better than treasure, Sean. How come? Well, the pirates with their treasure chests of gold doubloons, they were just passing through. Visitors. Looking for adventure. But the people who made and used that bowl lived here. They lived on this island, just like we do, Sean. This was their home. Just like it's our home now. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears. Where America shops for value. American Family Robinson was written by Pamela Russell. Produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Howard Duff. Our stars were Keith Andes and Mary Jane Croft. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear, Gay Nelson, Corey Burton, Brian Miller, and Stacey O'Brien. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson. Mark Trella is production supervisor. And the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Monday's Sears Radio Theater will be a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Let's listen. You don't know him like I do, Seth. You don't know how he is. What do you mean? I can't sleep knowing he's there next to me. I can't sleep knowing what a cold-blooded killer hog Russell is. So be sure and tune in next Monday to the Sears Radio Theater. CBS News, the State Department has issued its first comment on today's killing of four Americans in Turkey. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. The Americans, three civilians and one military man, were gunned down by terrorists as they waited for a bus on a street corner near Istanbul. Several men and a woman armed with machine guns passed by in a car spraying gunfire at the Americans. The State Department tonight issued a comment read by spokeswoman Mary Ann Bader. We condemn in the strongest terms the terrorist act which took place in Turkey today. Civilized people everywhere are outraged by such cowardly acts of violence. The Turkish government has expressed its grief about the loss of the four Americans and has stated its determination to search out and find these terrorists. The Department of State extends to the families of those killed its deepest sympathy. The Turkish government also condemned the attack and said it was an attempt to undermine vital U.S.-Turkish relations. More news in a moment. The Senate has broken its impasse over the oil industry windfall profits bill. Ending a three-day filibuster, the lawmakers agreed to tax the industry an extra $178 billion over the next 11 years. The final version may not be worked out for several days, but it's thought a windfall profits bill can be on President Carter's desk before Christmas. Members of a Congressional Conference Committee have reached tentative agreement on a $20 billion program to develop synthetic fuels. 
The vote appears to assure passage of President Carter's proposal for alternative fuels, a key part of the president's energy program. Campaigning in California today, Senator Edward Kennedy accused President Carter of straddling the fence between hawks and doves over the defense budget. Kennedy said the president is trying to please everybody. It seems to uh, me that uh, he is trying to give uh, uh, everything to every interest in the Senate of the United States. He's talked about a 5% budget authority and only 3% uh, outlay. So for those that want a bigger a defense budget, he can uh, use the 5%, and for those that want a more modest increase, he can use the outlay. And uh, this is, uh, I think, the kind of double talk which is uh, enormously troublesome. Kennedy today entered his name in the New Hampshire primary with twice the number of signatures presented yesterday by President Carter's people. On February 26th, New Hampshire will hold the nation's first presidential primary. Defense Secretary Brown says rejection of the SALT II Treaty would force the United States to spend an extra $3 billion a year on defense than is currently planned by President Carter. Brown said that much money would be needed to keep up with Soviet programs. President Carter tonight ordered striking employees of the Long Island Railroad back to work for 60 days, while both sides present their case to an independent board. Presumably the trains will start running again Monday. The walkout, now in its sixth day, affects some 300,000 New York City area commuters. Secretary of State Vance arrived back in the United States following his week-long visits with NATO officials in Western Europe. Vance immediately went to the White House for talks with President Carter about the Secretary's discussions with European officials on the Iranian crisis. Vance tried to persuade the Allies to join the U.S. in a possible trade sanction program against Iran. Now this. The mayor of West Rushville, Ohio, has decided to do something for the people of his community this Christmas. He's inviting the whole town to dinner on Sunday. Mayor C. Ford Schaefer, who is 74, will hold the affair at the Lions Club building in West Rushville, a farm town in central Ohio. There are about 227 people in the community. Schaefer went from door to door, inviting them personally to the Sunday fair. He says he's only doing it for goodwill, no axe to grind. Schaefer said, I hope it brings us closer together. Doug Poling, CBS News.